Karen Bryan for MMA Heat. I'm here with Rico Verhoeven. He is the Glory Heavyweight Champion. Of course, folks, you know that's kickboxing. And even though we uh, usually cover MMA, we all know we're down with kickboxing. So we're here at Dynamics MMA. How long are you in town uh, in LA? And are you going to do some training here? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do some training tonight. Just a little bit, just uh, relax. And I've been in town now for two days. I'm going to stay for another two days to do some seminars. So uh, I'm going to be here the 21st of June for a fight. So uh, yeah, just. Creating a fan base right here. Nice. Well, the fight is, uh, like you said, June 21st. It's here in Los Angeles. You're facing Daniel Gita. Uh, how much of a threat do you think he is to your throne? Uh, well, I think he's the, my biggest competition in the, uh, in the heavyweight top five right now. So he's a, he's a talented fighter. Um, yeah, he, he got, he's got all the tools, but not the tools to break me. But you fought him before, and you were victorious, right? How did that fight go? Yeah, it was a good fight. Uh, I had a, a tough fight before against Saki. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, I think the tournament favorite. Uh, I beat him in, uh, in three rounds on decision. Uh, he had a, like an easy first fight. His fight was finished in like uh, one minute, 30 seconds. So, but I was, I was warm. I was in, I did, uh, I did three rounds, so I was ready. And did another three, three rounds against him. But yeah, for me it went well, uh, like after the first first round and uh, first minute in the second round he just broke mentally you know he's just uh, he got tired and I just like a bulldozer when I dropped over him well certainly this time though you'll be fresh when you guys face each other but do you think you'll have the advantage anyway because you you've already beaten them yeah definitely it's also a, a mental issue you know I already beat him so uh, it's in his mind and it's uh, it's now not three times three minutes, but five. It's going to be five rounds. So the longer it takes, the more it's in my advantage. Mm -hmm. Do you have a different strategy though? Sometimes when you fight somebody, you know, for the second time, you realize, oh, you know what? Even though I won this one uh, the first time, this didn't work as well, or this didn't. I mean, is there anything strategically that you could do differently? Uh, yeah, of course. You know, you analyze uh, every fight, and after every fight, I have a lot of. Uh, Thing, cri criticism on myself mm -hmm. you know I said like why am I doing that and that moment why am I doing this and so for me I'm always critical on myself so um, yeah I think uh, I think it's gonna be uh, I think it's gonna be a good fight mm -hmm. so uh, last fight was not really thinking about kickboxing was just going forward and just showing him that I, that I'm stronger and uh, I got more oxygen than him and it worked but now we're gonna do a more technical fight so you said also that you beat Peter Ertz, I remember actually watching that. Didn't he retire after that fight? Uh, well, it was his last big fight. Okay. So I think he's going to do like maybe two more small fights, but not really big names anymore. You know, I think uh, for him, he's been everywhere. He, he fought everybody. He beat everybody. So I think just let him retire easily. Right. But what did that mean to you to meet somebody who obviously has been around for so long and, and has that sort of legendary status? Well, even talking about it gives me gives me goosebumps. You know, it's um, yeah, it's a fun story to tell because he was the one inspiring me to become a kickboxing champion or thinking about becoming a kickboxing champion. So, is I think it's like um, yeah, like 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, I saw him fight and I saw him become champion for the first time in Japan. And I was like, this is what I want, you know, all the people going crazy and giving him the respect he deserves. And like now, 20 years later, I took his spot like in top heavyweight kickboxing. But as a real Dutch native, we have, of course, we have another Dutch, uh, some more Dutch good fighters. But uh, like uh, Saki is, is from Turkey. Uh, we have Remy. Uh, we have so many Dutch fighters, but they're all fighting for different countries. And I'm the really Dutch native fighter. So like Peter, I took his place. So it's like for me, it's like still like a movie. So like 20 years later, I'm in the same shoes as him. So how many people can say that? How many people can have a dream when they're young, when they're a kid? And like, I want to be a pilot or a fireman or whatever. And after 20 years later, they're really that person. So for, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's a uh, it's a dream coming true. That that is sound amazing. But the interesting thing about being in that position now is that there's a big old bullseye on your back. You're the target that everybody's gunning for. Um, do you do you feel that kind of pressure, or do you just kind of take every fight you know as it comes? I mean, because a lot of time you know with the championship comes the burden of you know keeping everybody back and a lot of stress of trying to stay at the top. Yeah, of course you you feel the the pressure of other people uh, expecting 
a good fight of, uh, from you. So they're expecting, oh, you're the champion, so you have to win. But for me, I don't feel like, oh, I am the champion. I just did a, uh, a few good fights last year. Well, a few. I did like four good fights. I beat I beat all the top five guys. A couple guys. of legends, you know, all the best names in the game. But it was not a really big deal. But for me, it's just, yeah, I did good fights. I won the championship belt, but I just want to keep doing the good fights. just want to entertain people. So just, uh, yeah. I'm doing what I'm, uh, what I love to do, and that's kickboxing. I love this sport, and yeah, I hope the people are, the, especially the American people, are gonna love it more and more. No, obviously, I do have to ask. You came here with Stefan Struver here at a mixed martial arts gym. Yeah. Uh, you know, people always ask. You know, with Tyrone Spong, asked him if he was gonna get into MMA. It's kind of an obvious question. Do you have any interest in that? Uh, well, I did a boxing match last week. And uh, I did some uh, grappling uh, tournaments in Holland like uh, two years ago and it was fun <laughs> and I liked it but now the main thing is kickboxing right now but I'm always open for different stuff because I like martial arts mm -hmm. I like to do different stuff so who knows if when I'm getting tired of kickboxing and I get a I get a good uh, yeah maybe a yeah, maybe I get a a good a good uh, yeah like surprise from UFC yeah, or yeah. a different organization that says like Rico we want you to do some MMA. One minute, guys. One so minute. let's see what the proposal is. You know, you never know. You never know. Well, if you know guys like Stefan and you know Gagard Musasi as well, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, those guys are great. They're yeah. doing great. I'm uh, I'm happy. Uh, Stefan is doing uh, doing well again uh, with. On his, with his uh, health again so yeah I hope he's gonna do great and yeah let's see what happens awesome awesome well congratulations on the title and again you're fighting on June 21st uh, here in Los Angeles it's gonna be a great show and best thank of luck you. to you thanks for talking today thank you thank you appreciate it